On the way back to the south of Bolivia, we definitely want to go to the Toro Toro National Park to do a little hiking. Unfortunately, the weather didn't really cooperate, which was a shame because along the way up to the park, we saw extremely beautiful layers of rock with sensational colors. The road should probably be completely tarred in future. In meantime, however, only major earth movements are underway. And for us, that man turning back. With this slippery surface and so narrow and close to the abyss, that wouldn't have worked. Luckily, we were able to turn around at this curve. It's a shame, but it meant we could look at the beautiful colored rocks again in peace. And the great view. And since the clouds had cleared up a bit, we took the opportunity to take a closer look at the gorge. The passage through the village of Punata was as always pretty and colorful. And this time too, we managed it without tearing off a cable. The village of Yampares, located west of Sucre, is really exciting to look at as the old village structures are still preserved and inhabited. The contrast to Sucre itself is enormous. The former home of almost all the silver barons is a real gem and definitely worth a visit. The colonial splendor is unbelievable. The next destination was Potosi. At just over 4000 meters, the city is a good 1200 meters higher than Sucre and is best known for the silver and tin mined here. We park at the Mirador and explore the city on foot. After the city tour, we set out to find our way out of the city. We want to take Ruta 1 on the eastern edge of the city to drive further south towards the Argentine border. So far, so good. Everything went well, but the traffic chaos almost took our breath away. And then we finally made it. We can already see Cerro Rico, the silver mountain of Potosí, on the right. And a few more snowflakes for our farewell. The very last stage in Bolivia has begun. We drive along Ruta 28, along the Argentine border to the Aguas Blancas border crossing. And on this route, Bolivia gave it once all and presented its beauty. Starting with these serpentines down into the river valley, which the drivers of the construction truck said only two tight curves, after that it's easy. It's all well and good, but they have to be overcome somehow. In these moments, I'm just grateful that I have the job of filming and not driving. And I strongly assume that Peter feels the same way. 
but this beautiful gorge is really worth driving through. And the good thing is that this route is used daily by the trucks from the construction site on the other side of the gorge. At least we know that the road is stable if enough for our weight. Which is definitely helpful to know in these sections. And finally the end is coming. The next day we are almost speechless in front of this endless expanse. But soon we go down from the plateau into another large valley. As is often the case in the mountains, the river valleys are green and mostly populated. We have to go all the way down through the village, then cross a branch of the river and go back up on the other side. So far, we've always been lucky with oncoming traffic. There was always a passing place around. Some rocks almost look like sculptures. This plateau as well leads us again to a river valley, but this time it is quite wide, which we then have to cross again. The whole route is literally a roller coaster ride. In this village, the teacher teaches seven children, off to all. The road continues to meander through the endless range of hills. Part of the beauty of Bolivia lies in these endless expanses, which are hardly or at least only slightly populated. So much nature and isolation are simply a luxury. And what also fascinates us is the diversity of the landscape, sometimes rough, sometimes gentle, sometimes grey and barren, or lush green, just within a few kilometers. A feast for the eyes. The river near this village carries a little more water than the others. We have to approach the ford precisely, so that the pebbles don't wash away under the tire. It's a little narrow because of the rock on the right, but we can position ourselves correctly for the channel. This driver saw us in time and kindly stopped and gave us space. This area is a potato growing area and in all the villages people are busy harvesting. The transport is carried out with small trucks, which is logical given these rather narrow paths.
Well, that was the last fort. We didn't count, but there were a few. So, the bridge becomes a luxury. And here we sleep for the last time in Bolivia. It was just great.